get ready. Hi, so this is my helmet. This is the helmet that I use. So this is the um, the Shark uh, Carbon Spartan. Um, so as you can see, it's it's red and it has this carbon effect on it. And uh, the reason that I picked this helmet primarily was one, I think, you know, it looks great. Um, but it had all the other features that I was looking for in a helmet. So number one is that, it, you know, it's a polycarbonate. It had an inner visor here, which is easily... Uh, accessible it's got the uh, the insert pin lock uh, feature on it as well uh, and it's it's quite lightweight you know it's uh, it's it's pretty lightweight in comparison to uh, a lot of the helmets that are out there uh, as you can see i've already got it rigged up for all my camera setup uh, but i go through those uh, items in, in other reviews um but overall i like this helmet uh, primarily you know one of its looks to it's it's pretty high quality uh, and it's very good value for money. I think I paid, I can't remember what I paid. I think it was 250 or 300 euros for this. And I think it's just as good as some of the, the higher end um, uh, helmets. So there's very little wind noise in it as well, uh, for given what it is. The one thing that I would say about it is that the paintwork on it, and I don't know if it's just that I got a, a bad one. Um, but as you can see here, I'll, I'll show you here in my helmet some of the paintwork has flaked off here and I haven't dropped this helmet so you know that's clearly a, um, a quality issue there uh, it also happened up here but overall I think that's pretty poor and um, if it's just the paintwork I'll live with it for a little while longer there's no point in going out and buying a whole new helmet um, but uh, but other than that it's a, it's a pretty good helmet and um, great value for money in comparison to to similar helmets or more expensive helmets on the market but uh, I just think it looks good. Um, so it's great for touring. You know, as I said, it's got the inner visor. So if you're out driving and all of a sudden the the, uh, the sun gets too bright, you can just drop the inside visor. Uh, and then if it's if it's too dull, you can just bring it up and then go with the, the outer visor. Uh, and obviously the pin lock uh, works very well. Um, so, uh, so that's my helmet. So I'll just go through the gloves that I use at the moment. So I've I've two sets of gloves. I have these Modeca uh, summer gloves, and then I have these Denisi uh, winter Gore-Tex gloves. So I'll, I'll just go through the summer gloves first. Uh, so these are the Modeca. I think they're called the Track Two, and I've had these for a long while now. Uh, but they're very good. They're, the the leather on them is exceptionally good. They're nice and soft, um, but it has this hard shell here for protection. Uh, and it's very well ventilated for during the summer. Uh, so these would be my go-to gloves. I just, I, they're very good protection on the palm. They fit nice and tight. I can sense that already if you, if you were to fall off, these wouldn't come flying off. They have a Velcro strap here for, for tightening them down. It keeps them really secure on for if you were to come off the bike. Um, and uh, they're very cool when you're wearing them in terms of the airflow on them. Uh, I'll try to always wear these no matter what time of the year. Um, if you've watched my videos, you'll notice that up until now on the old uh, BMW GS 1200 that I had, that I'd always wear a set of um, handlebar muffs on the motorbike if the weather got very bad. So generally, if the weather was, was raining or, or in any way uh, terrible like that, I would generally keep these gloves on, but put the muffs on over the handlebars and then wear these underneath and then maybe turn on the, the heated hand grips. Uh, and then it just makes a really good combination. And, and the reason I do that is because, which will bring me to these gloves. These gloves, very expensive. Uh, I think I think I either paid two or three hundred euros for these. Uh, now they are absolutely 
bomb proof when it comes to uh, weatherproofing and uh, heat uh, very warm very comfortable uh, nothing gets through them in terms of rain uh, they're fully Gore-Tex they have a huge amount of body armor in them they'll still work in your phone uh, they have an inside tinselet liner uh, so it's a double lined one um, and they have an awful lot of protection on them as well so they're extremely good glove but what I would say about them is that um, when I bought these I bought them about a size or two larger than I needed because uh, I'm just very conscious of the fact that gloves even these gloves when your hands are wet they can be tricky to get on uh, but even with the additional size in these when your hands are wet these are almost impossible to get on they are a nightmare um, so I only take these with me and use them as a last resort um, but having said that they, they are they are absolutely bulletproof if I don't want to to, to go through the hassle of putting on all of the uh, uh, the handlebar muffs etc if I'm on the road I'll, I'll stick these on uh, and then I'll try not to take them off at all possible because they're just so hard to get back on plus you lose an awful lot of dexterity and, and um, just you know feeling away around your 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 um, your controls uh, they just I just find them very cumbersome you know but I think you'd find that with any big heavy uh, winter glove like these um, but in terms of weatherproofing, you, you can't go wrong with them. These are called the Denisi, uh, let me see what their name is. They are the Denisi X Travel GTX. That's what they are. Uh, so uh, good glove, but you know, you have to, you have to be really um, stuck in the weather to use them. Uh, so those are my gloves. So another item that I use all the time when I'm driving um, is, a, is a neck tube and uh, my go-to neck tube would always be the Buff, um, that's the uh, the brand that I would use. Now I do have, you know, other generic ones but I do find that, you know, for the extra few quid the Buffs are better, very breathable, um, they, uh, they're very good for just keeping your neck warm. Uh, I also use it then I, I put it up right up over my head and use it almost like a balaclava uh, and that way it just keeps the inside of the helmet uh, clean and tidy and fresh at all times you know and it keeps your head warm or cool in, in, in the summer uh, but I, I don't like driving without one of these now and um, they're very handy and I suppose given the fact with the, the situation we're in now with the COVID-19 uh, the coronavirus they're very good to pull up over as a face mask as well when you're just uh, walking around without your helmet on you know uh, but a really good little item I, I've been using these for years uh, I don't go anywhere without them I have a whole selection of these now I've probably about 15 of these things and um, I try and buy one every time I'm in a different uh, country so I have one from all of my major trips you know the like the, the likes of the Stelvio Pass and all like that just a great little uh, inexpensive mementos to, to, to get uh, and I also use them in other activities that you know like if I'm hiking or walking or cycling, uh, they're just very handy to have, but primarily for, for the motorbike. Uh, you can also get a winter buff, which is basically the same as this on top, but at the bottom it has a fleece liner and it just keeps you that bit warmer during the winter. Uh, but these are a great item, you know, I can't be without the, the L buff. So these are the boots that I wear. Uh, these are the CD Adventure boots, um, and these are a phenomenal uh, boot. They're again, these are 100% waterproof, and they definitely are. You know, there's no two ways about it. I've I've driven through all weathers for you know full days riding, and never has anything come through these boots. They're absolutely amazing. They have a huge amount of um, armor protecting protecting in them, and that's why I bought them. Uh, a few years ago I, I had an incident where I forgot to take the uh, disc lock off my CBR Fireblade, sorry Blackbird and uh, when I went to go forward obviously it locked up and the bike went over and the whole weight of the bike came down onto my foot and I was only wearing um, sports boots at the time and they were just too soft and I crushed three of the bones in my foot so stupid simple little mistake like that and you know absolutely banjoed my foot but um, that's why I decided to go out and get something a bit more robust and after looking at a lot of boots, you know, particularly motocross boots because they're so rigid, um, I ended up deciding on the Adventure, uh, City Adventure, because the motocross boots, they're just too stiff 
for the type of driving that I do, you know. Uh, so these are grand. Uh, they, they, as I said, they have a lot of protection up the front right up here on your shin. The buckle system on them is really easy and quick, very quick to release and to get on. Um, full leather. Uh, and they have uh, the, the weatherproofing uh, liner in them that keeps them 100% waterproof. Uh, the other thing about them is one of the reasons that I bought this is that all of these bits are all replaceable. So these things are supposed to last you for years. But primarily, and this is one thing to be conscious of, is, is the sole. The sole of these is supposed to be uh, replaceable. And I bought a set of replacement soles to go onto these. Um, what they don't tell you is that to put those new soles on, it's a very specialist job. You can't just go to a local um, a local place and get those put on. Uh, it's a very specialist one. They, I went to about three or four people uh, locally here and they just point blank refused to put them on because they're afraid that they can't line them up properly and they won't get the seal on them properly and they just refuse to do the job. So you have to bring, bring them to a full on professional cobbler uh, and they're going to charge you well over 100 euros to put them on. So you know the, the the soles themselves are about 40 or 50 euros and then to get them fitted is about another 100 or so euros sure so you're nearly halfway to the price of of uh, a new set of boots at this point you know so uh i'd certainly take that uh, with a pinch of salt and um, the other thing that would be i would say is a negative about these boots uh is they squeak they squeak like crazy it's unbelievable how loud they are and how often they squeak and I know everyone's going to say to me, oh, you just put a bit of WD-40 or cooking oil and I tried all of that. It lasts for maybe 20 minutes or an hour and then it's gone. Uh, it's it's incredible. It's almost embarrassing at some point. You know, you've spent, it's grand when you're out on, on your bike, you do your day's driving, you're out and about, that's fine. But when you get to your destination and you're you're walking into the lobby of a, of a hotel and you're squeak, squeaking up the lobby and the whole place is stopped to look at you, it's 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 stupid. And I can't believe this is the Adventure 1. There is an Adventure 2 version of them. And I was going to go out and buy them, given the, the condition of the soles at the moment. Um, but from what I can gather from all the reviews of the Adventure 2 is that they haven't resolved the problem with the squeak. Um, now, for me personally, it wouldn't put me off them. I think overall the boot itself is just so good that it's, it's, it's a minor issue. But it is definitely something you need to be aware of. It's, uh, it's very, very prominent. Uh, and again these these are an expensive boot i think i think i paid about 300 350 for these boots and i think they i'm not sure what the new adventure 2 is but uh, I'll, I'll put up a, a link to uh to the pricing on those uh but yeah it's it is a good boot i have to say um but uh but yeah that's the boot Okay, so now I just want to talk through the, the gear that I wear uh, when driving the motorbikes. Um, at the moment I'm using uh, the RST Adventure gear. Uh, and this is the gear that I've always used right from Edition 1. I think they're up to Edition 2 or 3 now at the moment. Um, but it's a really, really good, great value for money suit. Uh, let me just walk you through it. So, so this is the jacket here itself. So as you can see, it's black, but it comes in other color, colors like the desert colors, etc. Um, there's an awful lot of this reflective stuff on it here so that if you're driving through the night you know it lights you up a little bit and gives you that bit more visibility uh, it's very well armored uh, so there's shoulder army armor here elbow and uh, right the way down the length of your, your forearms as well uh, this is an all year uh, all weather suit so they do they achieve that by having a triple layer so obviously it has its external fedora uh, outer layer but then there's two other layers there on the inside, one being your waterproof layer and then a quilted layer. And obviously you can take any of those layers out uh, or a combination of those layers out uh, at any time. So during the winter, I find with all three layers in and a base layer, I'm snug as a bug in a rug. You know, it's uh, it's very, very warm, you know, and uh, you don't overheat in it either. Um, you know, for the summer driving, you can strip out the quilted layer. You can maybe leave in the, the waterproof in case of showers or just pack it away. Uh, but if you take out the waterproof layer as well then there's an awful lot of vents that you can open up all the way down here across here the entire length of the arm opens up uh, there's two vents going down the back of it uh, you know it just creates an awful lot of airflow it's really really good 
There's a quilted collar on it as well to stop any kind of scuffing around your neck and, and creating any kind of a soreness. Um, the, the pockets in it as well are also waterproof so if you put, you put your wallet in there you know it keeps it uh, you know dry. Uh, they tab over, they're velcroed so that your wallet won't fall out when you're moving which is, which is added to me. Uh, but a couple of other features on it that I found very very useful are on the back there's a pocket here that will take a one and a half litre uh, water bladder um, and then that allows a tube then to come around to the front so that you can drink your water while you're on the on the road moving that's very handy particularly when you're out in the wilds you know i used it a lot up in the uh, the northwest corner there of scotland uh, during the north coast 500 trip and it was absolutely brilliant and uh, the other thing then is down here at the bottom then there's a little pocket that's velcroed and, and zipped onto the bottom and that's detachable and I basically keep all my documents in there, you know, my, my insurance and breakdown and recovery and all of that type of stuff, all in there. Uh, very handy. Once I put on my gear, I know I've, I've got my documents with me, you know. Um, what I would say about the gear as well is, is that um, it's, it's it, like I said, it's very good value for money. When you put it in perspective uh, with the other suits that are out there that a lot of BMW drivers in particular would wear, uh, like I think for the jacket and the leggings, I think I paid a total of around the 500 euro marks. For an equivalent suit in the BMW range, or the Klim or Klim or however it's pronounced, you're talking anywhere from at least 1500 euros up to two, and in some cases 3000 euros, I think, for some of the Klims, even more. Uh, and I don't see what, uh, what you're paying the extra money for. As I said, I've driven 10 and 12 hour days in this stuff in absolute torrential rain, and nothing got through. And during the summer, with all the vents open and all the, the liners out, you know, air flows through it really good. It's very light. It's a, it's a perfect uh, summer gear. Uh, so I just don't see why you'd spend all that extra money just throwing away good money for a suit that doesn't do anything better than, than this does. And I think this looks better than them as well. Uh, those BMW suits and the, the claims are, I think they're very drab, uh, drab looking. Um, that's my opinion. I know there's a lot of you wearing them. Um, but uh, this thing is this thing is just it's just great. Uh, like I said, it has uh, matching uh, leggings, and again, these ones need a wash, so forgive me. But again, they've got the triple lining, the quilted and the waterproof. Uh, they have additional padding here for for to keep the wear and tear down. Uh, four pockets on them, all waterproof. The zip to make it into a one piece to to join it to the jacket. Uh, armor on the knees, and then they've got a zip open flared bottom so that you can get them over your boots easily. What I would say is they go over my city adventure boots without a problem and road boots. Anything bigger like a really heavy armoured MX boot I don't think they'd go over, you know, it's it's quite narrow. Uh, but overall an absolutely phenomenal piece of gear. Um, yeah, but that's 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 my gear. Uh, it's uh, like I said, RST adventure gear. Uh, about 500 euros and by far the best value for money. Uh, so that's it. Take care. So I want to start talking about base layers now and, the, and the, the main types of base layers that I use at the moment. So I basically two or I suppose depending on how you look at it, three different types of base layers that I, I currently use. Uh, and I think it's it's an area that is often overlooked, you know, particularly for long distance traveling or touring or anything like that. The base layer uh, is actually quite important because uh, as any motorbiker who knows who travels long distances, you know, particularly if you're two up, um, space is a premium you know uh, t-shirts and socks and all of that they take up space and the more you're adding in the more space they take up and weight and um, so you have to try and start to think a little bit clever uh, so the base layer is one area where you can do that and the reason is like most people I would have used t-shirts I still do you know a standard cotton t-shirt you buy them in Dunn's anywhere for a few quid and um, but the next step up from them would be something like this, which is a compression top. And you can get these compression tops anywhere, you know, any sports shop. I bought this, I think, in Little for a tenner. Um, you know, nothing magic about it. Good breathability. It's a slight step up from a t-shirt. But at the end of the day, like a t-shirt, it's totally unusable. It's just, you know, fit for burning, you know. So with a t-shirt or with something like this, you would have to be washing one every night at the end of your trip. And the problem with that is, is, is then obviously, the hassle of washing it you may not be able to wash it depending on where you are and your facilities 
might not have the time because they can take an awful long time to dry and it might not be dry by the morning um, and then you're, you're forced into taking maybe three four five six seven different t-shirts just for your riding t-shirt you know and um, so that's why I think you know you need to put a bit more thought into these type of tops uh, the next alternative then is one of these two now this one in particular this is this is a standard uh, base layer that you get in any of the outdoors hiking type shops uh, and this is primarily geared for, for hiking and walking but um, they're very good this is a hundred percent merino wool and um, and the thing about merino wool is because of the type of wool it is and the way it's uh, woven uh, it generates its own uh, lanolin and lanolin, lanolin is like a, a it's like a, a natural antibacterial and so what that does is uh, any body odors or anything like that are immediately killed you know so um, they're extremely breathable so by the end of a long day's riding you know they won't be saturated in pers perspiration they won't have an odor and um, if you do get to wash them they dry really quick an hour or two and they're, they're dry and um, but if you don't get that opportunity to wash them there's no panic because you can put it on for two three or even four days and there, there's just little to no odor coming from them they're absolutely incredible it's like magic and um, the next one then after that is is this so this is also 100 percent merino wool uh, but this is bike specific so um i bought this in in overlanders i think it's called nox it's a nox type uh, brand uh, so 100 percent merino wool down here with this breathable shoulder top on it and it's a short sleeve and I basically don't wear anything else now uh, as a base layer for, for the gear. Uh, like I said, with, with, with this one, this is a 260 weight. Uh, so this is quite heavy. It's like wearing a jumper, but the, the weight of a, of a t-shirt. Uh, for you know May or June or April time frame, I'd wear a much lighter one, 170 gauge. So it's much lighter and finer, uh, but it's very warm, uh, but it won't overheat you as well. So these, these are well worth the money. They're more expensive for the, the merino wool, particularly 100%. You know, you're talking anywhere from 60, 70 euros upwards uh, for, for a good brand. I think this one's called Icebreaker, and I said this one is Knox. But for long distance traveling, you know, a week or more, absolutely irreplaceable. One, two of these in your bag at a max, and that's your, your, your base layer sorter for the entire trip. You know, certainly no more than two, because if you have two, you can have one on the wash and, and one on the go for two or three days at a time. Um, so they're, they're absolutely unbelievable well worth the money uh, and the effort to get them okay base layers so the next item I want to talk about then in terms of my riding gear is the um, the headset that I use the Bluetooth headset that's attached to the helmet so I, I use this one which is the Interphone uh, Tour Edition so I think there's three different models of this it starts at the Interphone Urban then there's the Sport and then there's the Tour and the Tour I picked because it has the most features particularly if you're riding two up and um, this allows me to connect in with all of the, uh, the, the, the devices so I have a pair of these so I can speak to, to my pillion uh, it'll connect to other interphone tours if I'm riding in a pack it connects to my phone it'll connect to my GPS it'll even connect to the motorbike um, it'll connect to, to anything basically that needs sound for your, your, your Bluetooth um, to be honest with you if, if I was buying this again I'd probably go with the Senna um, this is very good probably the next in line to the Senna but what I would suggest is after watching some of the videos with uh, Rich Vida particularly for somebody like me and him doing the vlogging it seems that in the center he can connect his GoPro and his microphones through his headset and that might be possible with this but I haven't seen anything to, to, to suggest that just yet so if I'm wrong on that I'm, I'm, I'm open to be corrected uh, but I'll just show I've just put this away I'll show it to you on the helmet so obviously this is my helmet I'll just get a bit closer to the to the uh, camera so you can see it here it's it's quite a uh, it's quite large I suppose but it's easy access there's there's four buttons here that you can easily find there's little, uh, a little lip here that you can use to, to find where everything is the volume control etc on the side and it's just routed through a cable into speakers here up in, uh, in the uh, earpieces within the helmet uh, so 
it is a really good little system, you know. Um, but like I said, I'd probably go with the Senna the next time. I think the Interphone Tour Pack, uh, the Twin Pack, I think I paid about 450 or 500 euros for it. Um, but I am overall happy with it. It's, it's a good system. Uh, there's even a built in radio t with it. So if, if you know, if you're driving along and you've forgotten your phone or something like that, you can still power FM radio into your speakers and, and listen to it. So it's 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 pretty good. But um yeah, so that's my interphone tour.